we're, we're in the middle of a giant health epidemic here in the United States and to a lesser extent in the world. I mean, just look around. Everybody's sick. Mm -hmm. I mean, spend an afternoon at Home Depot or Walmart. It's like the walking wounded, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, the average American currently, this is June 2011, is on 11 prescription medicines. 11 prescription medicines. This is not because we have a bad gene. This is not because we've been cursed by God. It's because we are all unwittingly eating food that's hurting us because we've had no prudent, good, science-based, clinically verified counsel about what's good food and what's bad food. And most importantly, everybody in the United States is undernutrified, and here's why. My colleague, Dr. Wallach, from 70 to 82, is in charge of $25 million of federally funded research. His research unequivocally proved, this is not arguable, this is an academic fact, that the human body has 91 essential nutrients. There are 91 essential nutrients that must be imported into the body every day, 91. 60 of the 91 are minerals, things like calcium and phosphorus and silica, right? The problem with minerals is they're only found in one place. They're in the soil. Or sometimes they're in the water, but if they're in the water, it's, they're there because they've washed into the water from the soil. The problem is there's no place in the United States because of agricultural farming and also just because of Mother Nature's geology that all 60 minerals exist. So this row of the cornfield, there might be 12 minerals. The next row, there might be 17. The next row, there might be 25. The corn only needs six to grow. The human body needs 60, six, zero. So if this is how much nutrition the human body needs to be healthy every day, this is how much that's in our food. And then the stress of life whittles away at our reserves and something breaks. And then we go to a medical doctor who gives us a prescription drug to manage the symptom. We go from bad to worse. We're going to hell in a handbasket here because we've let MDs drive the bus of medicine for the last hundred years. And so the doctors, well, let's be fair, very, very often go into medicine with a desire to help people get well don't even understand how much of what they're doing is harming their patient more than helping it. Something's terribly wrong when you treat cancer, the most dreadly disease, and your hair falls out and you regurgitate, you vomit. This is astounding. This is truly medieval. Many years from now, people look back at this time and, and wonder what kind of Neanderthals we were. We are. Cancer isn't even the enemy. You find out that people in the United States and developed countries who are treated for cancer don't even die of cancer. They die of the treatment of cancer. For many years, I didn't think that people knew what made them sick, what caused cancer, but I've since come to realize that they do understand about diet, the environment, toxins, even emotions in the mind. But it's just too hard for them to change, to become responsible and become proactive participants in changing their life. We get greater toxic exposure from within our house than from without our house. So think about that. We get more toxic exposure by what we're cleaning our house with, what we're putting on ourselves, what we're spraying, what we're freshening the air with, what we are exposed to through the, the world of the EMFs, all the wireless devices, all the electrical devices, which is creating a condition called dirty electricity, which is impacting our body. Um, there are things that we bring into our home that are outgassing chemicals. Our our computers are outgassing PVDE, a flame retardant. That's, they built it into the computers. When it heats up, it outgasses. Who has not heard that fast food is highly toxic and 100% related to all degenerative diseases, lives either in a cave or is so numbed by all the toxins that they don't realize the danger anymore. Everybody eats food and none of us eat a perfect diet and eventually it catches up with us. You are what you eat. You eat junk and your body is junk. 
you know, literally everything in the center portion of the supermarket is almost all unhealthy. All toxins like MSG, aspartame, food colorings, food preservatives, they are found all guilty of having devastating effects. To talk about her newest book, Knockout, interviews with doctors who are curing cancer and how to prevent getting it in the first place. Suzanne, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Kathleen. Nice to be here. You've written a number of self-help books and have had a positive impact on so many lives as a result. Talk to us about why you wrote Knockout. I wrote Knockout because I had, um, I was diagnosed with cancer 10 years ago correctly and I am cancer free but earlier this year I was misdiagnosed with lung cancer that metastasized throughout my entire body in fact my oncologist said I have never seen so much cancer and he said what we can do is we can start you on full body chemotherapy today and I looked at him and I said just so you know where I'm coming from I'd rather die I, I would never take chemical poisoning it's just not in my nature to do something like that he said well then I think you should think about getting your things in order. And this was reconfirmed over six days in the hospital by six different doctors, all telling me that it was inoperable, incurable, and essentially hopeless. What I did hold on to around day three or four, I said to my husband, you know, I've been keeping a file on these doctors who are curing cancer, in most cases without drugs. If I can get out of this hospital, I want you to take me to one of them. So on the sixth day, when it turned out that they were horribly wrong, I was misdiagnosed, it was wrong, I had no cancer at all after looking death in the eye for six days, I thought rather than get mad, I'm going to interview these doctors in this file. And that's what I've done for the better part of this year, is talk to these doctors, interview them, and I would say to each of them, it's all well and good for you to tell me this, I need to talk to your patients. They opened up their patients to me. I talked to stage four lung cancer, liver cancer, ovarian cancer, cervical cancer, breast cancer, prostate cancer, brain tumors, all these people living these normal, healthy lives, having not been degraded by harsh chemicals, and I realized there is another way that none of us know about, and so that's what I've written about in Knockout. Other options that you probably don't know anything about. Now you interview doctors and medical professionals using everything from alternative to integrative to conventional methods to combat cancer. Right. Among them was NewsmaxHealth.com contributor Dr. Blaylock, who you also interviewed for your book, Breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Tell Love us why him. you revisited Dr. Blaylock and what insights did you feel that he would offer? Well, Dr. Blaylock is one of the brightest minds in the country. He's a he, oncologist, uh, neurosurgeon for 22 years, stopped uh, surgery because he said he was opening brains, seeing cancer so rare in younger and younger people that he decided he had to devote the rest of his life to research to the effects of chemicals on the uh, human brain and body. So he's a neuroscientist and I, I go to him for information all the time and one of the things that Dr. Uh, Blaylock told me that is absolutely shocking, so much so that I've hardly mentioned on television because I'm being so attacked for having the audacity to say that there are ways other than chemotherapy to deal with cancer. But he said, if I were a woman, I would never have a mammogram. And I said, what? He said, if a woman starts at age 40 with no cancer and has a mammogram every year, by the time she's 50, she will have increased her chances of getting breast cancer by 33 and a third percent. He said, also, the act of smashing the breast the way we do with, like in a panini machine with um, uh, a mammogram, he said, if you have a tumor in there, he said, that very process of smashing can break the tumor and metastasize the cancer. He said, um, I said, well, what do we do if we can't have mammograms? He said, uh, first you have an ultrasound, uh, you have a thermogram if there's any hot spots, then you have an ultrasound, if there are any shadows, then you have an MRI. I said, well, we can't afford MRIs. He said, if the new gold standard became MRIs, he said, then we, they would be affordable. He said, because there's no radiation and you see a clearer picture in an MRI. He said, the cumulative effect of radiation from mammograms is actually giving women cancer so and no first one off, wants this I was cancer. diagnosed with stage 3 colon cancer when I was 26 years old. I was rushed into surgery. I was told I would need 9 to 12 months of chemotherapy, but I refused chemotherapy and instead I radically changed my diet and lifestyle. I basically overdosed on nutrition with tons of juicing and giant salads and fruit smoothies, tons of fruits and vegetables from the earth. Okay. So 
The first thing you need to understand about cancer uh, is do not be afraid, okay? Don't be afraid. I know you probably are afraid, you're probably terrified because you think you're dying, but you're not, okay? Cancer is a very natural, normal process in the body. Everybody has cancer cells. We've all got them. The, uh, the body is designed to recognize them and eliminate them when a cell mutates and becomes cancerous, okay? So that's a properly functioning body. So cancer is not uh, the real problem. The lump or bump or lesion or whatever is typically not a real problem in your body. It's a problem, but it's not the problem, okay? The problem is that you are sick, that you have a systemic metabolic disease that is resulting in a tumor or tumors that are growing in your body, okay? So the tumor is the symptom. The tumor is not the real problem. If you cut the tumor off, your body's gonna build another tumor, right? So um, when people have cancer, what is going on in their body? Well, cancer is a result of a body that is nutrient deficient and overloaded with toxins and typically uh, the result of a suppressed or overloaded immune system. So what is causing this? Well, we have uh, the cancer death rate is triple, uh, has tripled in the last hundred years. And if you compare our lifestyle to the lifestyle of our ancestors a hundred years ago, it's very different. And so what has changed? The food we're eating. We're eating all this processed man-made food that we were never designed to eat. Plain and simple, you've got to get back to foods that are coming straight out of the earth in their natural form, fruits and vegetables. The earth was created for us and everything we need comes from the earth. It's such a simple concept. And you know what? Truth is simple. Uh, so what is what the problem is, is that we are overfed, but we're malnourished. We're stuffed, but we're starving. And we're getting plenty of protein, fat, and carbs. And But we're not getting these valuable, critical micronutrients. That's vitamins, minerals, enzymes, antioxidants, and the thousands of phytonutrient compounds in fruits and vegetables, in plants, that support the body's ability to heal and function at optimal levels. So not only are we missing a lot of these nutrients in our daily diets, but we're also putting in all this artificial man-made food that our body doesn't know what to do with. We're polluting our bodies with artificial chemicals, flavors, colors, texture enhancers, you know, artificial fats, you know, fake food. And that stuff is poisoning us, literally. You are poisoning and polluting your body with processed food, right? Cokes, uh, sports drinks, fast food, microwave food, restaurant food, all this stuff has been altered and it's loaded with processed sugar and salt and all that other stuff I mentioned before. So diet is number one. The second thing is your lifestyle. If you drink a lot, if you smoke a lot, and if you take uh, drugs, especially pharmaceutical drugs, if you're taking one or more pharmaceutical drugs, those are immunosuppressant. Those are cancer promoting, okay? There's no uh, pharmaceutical drug that is good for you. And your condition is not because you are lacking a pharmaceutical drug. So pharmaceutical drugs do not heal. They only mask and alleviate symptoms. The only way to true healing is through nutrition, to give your body all the building blocks that it needs to repair and regenerate. And the good news is, is that you can do that. Now, um, so your diet and your lifestyle are major factors. Drinking and smoking are cancer causers. Obesity is the second leading cause of cancer. If you're overweight, it is pro-cancerous. Your body is in a chronic state of inflammation and it's overloaded and it's struggling. So that's a major cancer promoter. Um, the third factor is lack of exercise. If you're not moving, if you compare yourself to our ancestors who moved constantly, they most of them worked with their hands. They did physical labor, which is exercise. They ate fresh food that they grew. They got from a neighbor or they swapped with a neighbor. They bartered. They ate livestock that they raised or their neighbor raised. So they ate fresh food from the earth versus today and all our processed food. So you've got to move your body. Exercise and movement is life. When you exercise, you're sending signals of life 
to your body to grow and to get stronger and to live. So you have to start exercising. And then the fourth factor is stress. Stress uh, destroys your immune system. It suppresses your immune system, whether it's relationship stress, work stress, uh, too much exercise, like extreme exercise, like marathon running and, and uh, triathlon training. Uh, you can't overdo it. But all stress is immunosuppressant. And if there are people in your life that, uh, that you've not forgiven, if you're harboring negative emotions like unforgiveness and bitterness and jealousy and you're judgmental and critical of others and you're always negative, you are in a cr chronic state of inflammation and stress. Your stress hormones are elevated, your cortisol and your adrenaline are elevated, and that is a pro-cancerous condition. Okay, So all four of those factors, your diet, your lifestyle choices, whether or not you exercise and stress, that is how you get cancer, right? Those four factors either promote health or they promote disease, depending on your choices, okay? But that's the key because you have choices. You can turn your health around by changing the way you live your life, okay? So uh, don't let anyone rush you into surgery, chemo, or radiation. You have time. The majority of cancers are not life-threatening, and they're not emergency situations. In fact, the majority of people diagnosed with cancer feel fine. They have a lump or a bump or a lesion or something unusual on a scan, but other than that, they feel fine. They feel healthy, okay? So uh, most doctors will even admit that you have some time. And if you would tell your doctor, I would really like to take some time to change my life. Can I have 30 days? Can I have 60 days? Can I have 90 days? and radically change your diet and lifestyle and see what happens. In my experience, every cancer can be cured in two to 16 weeks. The second you get rid of acidosis and toxemia, the second the body gets alkaline and oxygen rich, with juicing a lot of greens like chlorophylls, everything that's green has a lot of chlorophyll, gives the body a lot of oxygen. Getting your body alkaline with, with good calcium, with good nutrition, with good trace supplements, uh, trace minerals, will help to alkalize the body. So that means the second you are alkaline, the cancer already stops. It can take a couple of days, a couple of weeks, but it stops. You get the, the body to a healing pH level, which the pH scale goes from 0 to 14, so 7 is neutral, and you need to be slightly alkaline. 7.36 is ideal. But in the healing phase, you should go up to 7.5. It's a bit, little bit over-alkalizing the system. A great friend of mine, Dr. Uh, Martin in Germany, he is using uh, oxygen more step therapy, for example, where you take the blood out, get ionized oxygen, and you lead the blood back in, and you do this 12 times, and you have basically brand new blood like a, like a newborn baby. So you already eliminated the lack of oxygen. You see the blood coming out looks like black. They put the oxygen in, and it becomes pink. And it's like mm -hmm. legal doping. You, you get it and you feel <laughs> so energized and you're so vital. And um, there are, uh, we know basically with um, what I used, my, what my MDs in, in Europe used uh, is um, vitamin C injections, intravenous vitamin C injections, 100 cc's a day, um, three times a week. Uh, that's what we used in, in certain cases more often. And very often, believe it or not, in my personal experience, the tumors or the cancerous growth was basically gone within a couple of days. Yeah. And because vitamin C is so powerful, and one of the greatest healers out there, you can ne fix nearly every heart problem, cardiovascular problem with, with vitamin C, they want to take it off the market. So uh, it's basically it's going to become a prescription medication, and then it's synthetic and will not work anymore, like vitamin E. Vitamin E basically helps you to cure uh, very easy and fast uh, blood pressure problems uh, in any way, shape, or form. That's why they, they, they made a study with artificially created vitamin E, mm -hmm. chemical created vitamin E. They said, see, it doesn't work. No, of course not. <laughs> Chemicals don't work. Nature works. Mm -hmm. If nature creates a problem, nature creates a solution. Very simple and easy. If it didn't exist 100 years ago, you don't need it today. It's very, very simple. And um, when you want to help somebody to educate themselves to eliminate his or her own cancer really, really fast. I would basically start instantly with a vegan diet or with a raw food diet. 
My friend Paul Nissan is one of the greatest uh, raw food chefs. He has a fantastic books out there about raw food, so it's accessible for a couple of bucks how to do it. He has free videos all over his website. Mm -hmm. And I would go instantly on a raw food diet. I would go uh, make sure if I don't have a very rare kidney disease to drink a gallon of water a day with half a teaspoon of sea salt in it a day because we need salt for every body function. We need electricity. And this electricity can only be um, uh, produced with enough salt, basically. So okay. if, if you have a lack of salt, you have a blood pressure problem. See, and we're not supposed to have salt, though, too, especially if we have high blood pressure. That's what we're talking about. Okay, it's the opposite. <laughs> the problem is they are talking about table salt. Very often, table mm -hmm. salt is one-third glass, one-third sand, and one-third salt. So this, the glass or the sand is scratching the arteries, and they start to bleed. So now cholesterol goes there to stop it from, to make you survive, to stop it from bleeding so that you don't bleed to death internally. So now they say the cholesterol all of a sudden is the cause of the high blood pressure because it narrows the, mm -hmm. the blood waves. And uh, that's completely absurd because you die of not enough cholesterol. You do not die of too much. There are people with a cholesterol of 600, perfectly healthy, never been sick in their lifetime. So what do you do with a, with a, with a patient in a burn, burn unit? You give them 20 to 25 hard-boiled eggs a day because they know only cholesterol can rebuild brand new healthy mm. cells really, really fast. Nearly 87% uh, of a cell is built from cholesterol. So where does the new cell potential or foundation come from if you have a lack of cholesterol? Everybody should have at least 250 combined cholesterol. And then they tell you uh, LDL and HDL mm -hmm. are good and bad cholesterols. It's not even cholesterol. It's a protein that transports cholesterol. So they are too stupid to even narrow it down the right way. So if you look at the facts and if you look what they know and what they don't know, you know that uh, Dr. Gary Null stated it and a lot of other people, the medical profession, the medical doctor statistically has the shortest lifespan of 56 mm -hmm. years of age, the highest abuse rate of alcohol and drugs, the highest suicide rate, only the psychiatrist is higher. And uh, so you go to somebody that has the lowest lifespan, highest suicide rate, highest drug abuse rate, to ask them how to have, have a healthy, healthy. happy, uh, long life. Yeah. Uh, I think we should rethink our way of thinking.